Um, morning, everyone. Um, these are the slides that Clarissa didn't talk to. Imagine if we're given her all the time. Um, they're all obviously in your packs. Um, and again, maintaining the theme. Actually, is one of my partners on the podium said, that's not actually a picture of me. Um, uh, that's my client, my client, and the theme of these briefings is to try and um, try and give you a sort of snapshots of different types of litigation. Some of you will be more interested in some of it than others. But this is a, a very topical um, piece of litigation, as John was saying. We, we continue to defend um, Mr. Abliazor. Um, very brief sort of background is he, he ran the National Bank in Kazakhstan for a number of years. Um, we say, in fact, um, the banks say very successfully, the banks, banks claim in essence boiling down um, millions of pages of pleaded um, documents is that he um, siphoned off, defrauded the bank of approximately five billion um, US over a period of time. We say um, that's uh, untrue, he didn't um, uh, profit in that way at all and that the campaign against him is a politically orchestrated campaign. Um, he is and was and is the main um, focal point of opposition to President Nazarbayev in Kazakhstan, who needs to be careful what I say about these sort of things, but um, just let it be said, he's an, a democratically elected uh, president, he's ruled for 20 years and consistently gets 95% of the vote. Um, uh, you can make your own uh, judgment about that. And, and the whole um, essence of the litigation is, um, is one of warfare. Um, we have um, been involved in the case, defending him since September 2011. Um, the case has gone on for, for longer than that. Um, one, of, one of the extraordinary things about it is the number of reported decisions. I'm going to talk about two today that are um, hope, hopefully got some general relevance. Um, we think that probably in the region of 40 or so reported decisions covering all sorts of things, um, extent of receivership orders, freezing orders, third party funding, privilege, Norwich Pharmacal orders, which are orders um, obtaining documents against non-parties to litigation. Um, and uh, the case continues, uh, as I will touch on, to, to run on. Um, the, the background to it are, is the scope and um, uh, reach, if you like, of freezing injunctions. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about what they are or how you get them. But just put, put some pointers up there. Um, as, as to the background. Um, and, and one of the things um, to, to bear in mind in this case is that um, the, the bank have been incredibly aggressive against our client. They, they obtained a freezing order against him um, and, it, and it was coupled with the usual order that he disclosed um, um, assets and, and information about those assets. Um, they then um, were successful in getting receivers appointed over those frozen assets because they managed to persuade the court that um, Mr. Abliazov wasn't to be trusted in looking after the assets himself. Um, as the case went forward, they um, again were successful in um, persuading the court that he had been dealing with a number of those assets. And the sanction for that, um, it's a contempt of court when you have a freezing order over, over you, is that you get sentenced um, to prison. Um, and uh, that, that's what happened in this case. Um, again, sort of jumping around a little bit, um, and, it, and it was one of the more extraordinary moments of my career and, and those in the firm um, who were dealing with it. On, on the day that judgment was going to be handed down, and um, we were expecting Mr. Abliazov to meet us here and go down to court. He telephoned us to say he wasn't coming, and he disappeared. And um, it put the firm in a very difficult position, uh, as I'll come on to. Um, we have um, fought to carry on representing him. But because, um, just concluding the story about where the, where the case is, because he absconded, didn't comply with the court's order, the bank then moved that he be struck out of defending the litigation against him, um, which we have resisted. Um, they prevailed on that. Um, he has been struck out um, and has been debarred from defending the litigation. Um, and uh, the, the very current stage wh where we are, which is... Um, um, he, he's, he's gone on the record in the press as saying this, and we're instructed to do this. Is we've, we've taken that case to the Court of Appeal. Um, 
we've we, we lost there. There's a whole losing theme to this, isn't there, of, of what we're doing? Um, I'll come I'll come on to a couple of wins in a minute. Um, uh, and I mean, it, it actually uh, for for lawyers, um, it's, it's not something as commercial lawyers you, you get to to deal in a, a lot. But w what we say is, you know, we we can't deny he's breached some court orders and there's a criminal sanction to them and he's gone on the run. His reasons for doing that are that he feels, if he surrenders to the British authorities, and this is all public um, comment, that he would have been um, much easier to find and attack and wipe out by the Kazakh government. The English court can't believe that a prisoner in an English jail, that that, that could happen to them. Uh, our client has a different view. He's gone on the run. Um, under the European Convention of Human Rights, there is an enshrined right, Article 6, to a fair trial. We say all sorts of people have a right to a fair trial, no matter what they've done. And what he's done in this case should not prevent him from being able to defend the civil claims against him. And Article 6 covers the right to a civil trial as well as a criminal trial. So we will be taking that. Now, now we've lost um, all, all routes of appeal, including to the Supreme Court in the UK. We're instructed to take that case to the European Court of Human Rights, which will be a case against the UK government for failing to implement it through its courts properly. So there'll be some news about that coming forward. But on to the successes of Adelshaw Goddard. Um, <laughs> as part of, part of the, the background to this case from the very beginning, um, and again, one has to ex understand the freezing um, injunction regime, that you, you are allowed under the standard freezing order a reasonable sum um, in terms of legal costs to defend you. It's a relatively small sum. Um, and Mr. Abliazov, um, his, his position is that he, he has very little money, um, that, that he didn't um, disclose as part of disclosed assets, very little liquid cash. And he was funded by other sympathisers to his position, completely, you know, people totally um, disengaged from the litigation, third, third party funders, not, not in the sense that David was talking about, so individuals um, uh, who, who sympathised with him. The, the case for the bank was that the monies that were loaned to Mr. Abliazel for that purpose actually fall within the terms of the freezing order. They're an asset of his um, on the basis that he could call down the monies under the loan. They fell within the freezing regime. We've successfully um, won that argument um, at first instance that the, the courts found that no, in, in that situation, a loan is not an asset of the defendant whose, whose assets are frozen. Um, and that he, he continues to fund his defence in this way. That case is under appeal. The, the bank, um, uh, I won't say anything more about how, how the bank tend to get permission to appeal, but they, they got permission to appeal. And that case is coming to the, the appeal court um, later this year. So there, there may be some, some more clarification of that. But that is um, in line with current authority. Two more minutes to, to talk about your other success. The, the other yeah. success, if I can. Um, <laughs> Uh, again, not, not a picture of me. Um, uh, and another, when this sort of fateful day, February last year, when um, we realised our client wasn't going to turn up, very quickly the bank, uh, sorry, the, the court quite properly put this firm under quite tough obligations about were we still representing him, did we know where he was, we, we're under a duty punishable by contempt to tell the court if we know where he is. And we were, as you can imagine, um, absolutely um, clear about our obligations to our own client. He, he's consistently refused to tell us where he is. Um, but we, we took the view, obviously you can imagine um, with a lot of um, internal consideration about this, that, that we should carry on acting for him. Um, and we have a method of communicating with him, um, which does not involve knowing where he is. The, the bank sought to get hold of that um, method of communication and the communications we were having with it. And again, in a, in a case um, that has helpfully clarified that area of the law, and, and, and again, in line with authority that anyone is entitled to privilege confidential legal advice, the, the court um, upheld our defence that um, he was entitled to take that advice, and we, we continue to act for him in a way that um, is, is privileged and confidential from the other side. You might say, well, yeah, that, that, that's obvious, but in litigation where um, the courts have clearly been um, on, you know, on supporting one of the parties through, through the cases they've put, it, it was important to, to win that. And then I'll just, um, you, you've got this, um, these notes, um, 
in the pack. It's worth stressing that, again, this is a case that um, you might say, what on earth has it got to do with England? You know, it's, it's what happened to assets of the um, National Bank of Kazakhstan um, involving a Kazakh. Um, at the, a number of his, his disclosed assets were in the UK, but really relatively few. Um, and it, it's part of um, this recent trend of um, litigation that emanates from the former Soviet Union ending up in this country for the reasons that, that we've set out, that you know, the stable water system we have, the fact that um, there's, there's much more of a level playing field, it's felt, in the UK. And, and frankly, you know, the English court are at the vanguard of these freezing orders, Norwich Pharmacal orders, other types of injunction, which other systems of law either don't have or don't have you know, anywhere near the expertise that we have. So people um, uh, th th this sort of type continue to come and litigate here. That was all I was going to say, John.